I'm going to start by measuring five tablespoons of flour. It doesn't specify what kind of flour, so we're using plain flour. We need a total of five tablespoons. Three, four, and five. And the second ingredient is some Nutella, specifically three and a half tablespoons. It's not going to be the easiest thing, but this is why I'm wearing gloves, because I'm always prepared. I don't think it matters. This is a two ingredient recipe. I'm literally like a Nutella of some non-sterilized plastic gloves that I ordered from AliExpress. These are the only two ingredients you will need to make these cookies. And the best part is they cook in the microwave for one minute. That's kind of mind blowing if it works, of course. So I'm going to make it come together. Use an electric mixer if you have one. It's kind of satisfying. It smells incredible. Ooh, this consistency is starting to come together. You just need to be patient. But once you moisturize the flour, only good things come out of moisturizing the flour. And it's kind of coming together almost like a Play-Doh cookie dough, like a pretend cookie dough. Do you see what I mean? It's almost like a cookie dough. It's still a little bit crumbly. Obviously, we're gonna work this in a little bit better. You know what? I don't wanna make a mess. There's no other way. Maybe don't use gloves for this. Just use a spoon, mix this in a bowl, you'll be fine. I would be lying if I told you that this doesn't work out exactly the same as I saw on TikTok because it does. That looks exactly the same as it did on TikTok. You will be able to shape this into cookies, hopefully. So I think this makes a total of four cookies. So I'm going to split it into four, which is shockingly easy. Each cookie will be around this size. Let's try and make it pretty and round. That looks amazing. It looks like a Nutella truffle. It's so satisfying. So that is kind of the perfect shape. So we're going to make a tiny hole in it. So I'm going to stick my finger in it until we make a hole. When it cracks a little bit, but in a beautiful way, the hole is cracking. It's too early for this. Too early in the video. Here we've got our Nutella booty hole. <laughs> the Natus. <laughs> I can't say that. I need to stop. I am obsessed with the shine on this. It's cracking a little bit already, but it actually makes it look more satisfying. So I'm gonna put it here because my hands are kind of warming up the mixture. We're gonna roll out four of these. So we're gonna piece of parchment paper. Yes, I'm gonna put that in the microwave. I'm gonna put one of my cookies. And then we've got the other doughs that I made. I just haven't placed the hole in the cookie. Come on, we gotta be serious and professional and adult about making booty hole cookies. <laughs> and that just makes me laugh. What can I say? I kind of want to bake them like this because it looks like a giant Malteser, but we're gonna do the little hole in it. I'm just gonna press it in. It looks satisfying when it breaks a little bit. It is shockingly easy. This one melted too much, so we do have to move quick. Okay, we got four cookies. I'm going to cook them in the microwave for one minute. And I just want to say this is a really important message. This looks like an oven. It is an oven, but it is also a microwave. This is a thing that exists. I know a lot of people don't know this, but I cannot read one more comment saying, why am I cooking things in the oven? Because this is also a microwave, so you can pick the function. Let's cook this. So this is what it looks like before we put it in the microwave for one minute. Okay, so this was one minute in the microwave and I mean, it looks kind of the same. It is cooked. I am intrigued. I'm gonna do 30 seconds more for good luck. It doesn't look too different after it's baked, but it smells insane. It smells like a Christmas fair in your dreams. It smells like, I have no words, guys. This is the best smell that's ever been inside this kitchen. I know that's not a huge accomplishment, but it is the truth. Okay, so now I'm going to grab some of the Nutella and I'm going to place it in the center of the cookie, kind of like a, you know, traditional jam cookie. I think the best way to do this will be two spoons. And you kind of want to do this while the cookie is still warm. Obviously you want the Nutella to melt so that the whole thing looks really smooth. Some of them have lost the crevices, the holes a little bit because once it cooks it kind of just got a little bit bigger. But I think it's still gonna be perfect. Do you see in the back? It kind of looks like it's actually been cooked in the oven even though this was one minute in the microwave and this is kind of what the... I know it is an interesting look. We made enough jokes. We're good. We're good for today. Let's be adults about this. I can't show you and do this at the same time. You want to spoon the chocolate into the center and don't you use a lot of Nutella because like you want this to still look good. And it kind of looks like this, which is beautiful. Like, can you believe this is two ingredients? Like this looks gourmet. Because the cook is so warm, the Nutella will melt. So this will look a lot better, I think. I just want to know what it tastes like, you know? That's why I'm here. That's why I get out of bed any day, to be honest with you, to taste things. Other than that, life is really dull. That's it. We've got our cookies. I think they look really good. This one in particular looks incredible. This is a thick one. 
Oh, look, I think it's well cooked. You can tell me this is not a gourmet plate of cookies. One minute and two ingredients. Let's give it a bite. I always pick the ugliest one because I want to save the other ones for the thumbnail. But even the ugliest one is still incredible. Look how melty that Nutella is. Oh my God. No. No, 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 no. It tastes like Nutella shortbread. It has the texture of shortbread. Look at the center. It is perfectly cooked, but it is not dry. It's actually quite creamy. I can't describe this. It is so, so good. I would never lie to you. I do not want you to waste ingredients. I am telling you the truth. You have to try this. This works. I think one minute in the microwave is sufficient. I maybe did a little bit too long, like I did 10 seconds too long. I think one minute is the perfect amount at a high voltage. Voltage? Wattage? You know what I mean. This is insane. Let's buy one of the tiny ones. This one's a little bit softer. Let's try this one. Insane. Oh my God, the texture is even better. So delicious. 100% approved. This is better than any cookie. I spent all of last week making brown butter cookies. Some of them took 48 hours to chill. This is superior. Hats off to the chef. That's me, I'm the chef. Let me already anticipate the comments that this takes technically three ingredients or four. I don't count water or salt as an ingredient. So the recipe starts by combining oil, this is just vegetable oil, and boiling hot water. So this is just, I think, the salt is optional if you really want this to be two ingredients. I like salt. And we're supposed to mix this, but I didn't bring a spoon, so I'm just gonna, yeah, that's, that seems like a great plan. In three, Two, one, the salt is dissolved. Thank you. To this, we're gonna add two cups of plain flour, and that is essentially our ingredients. The sad part is you're supposed to knead the dough for five minutes. <sighs> this is fine. Small price to pay if you wanna make those lovely, I'm gonna call them breads. I'm not gonna lie, this dough is kinda slay. Like, we did this in literally five seconds, and it's kinda come together already, and it's not too sticky. I'm assuming once we knead this, it's gonna be a lot smoother. So I'm gonna be here for five minutes. This is fine. I got plenty of time. I have nothing else going on in my life. Making videos is what I plan my life around, because it is the one ounce of serotonin that I get in my life. Whenever someone thanks me for making videos, I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand. I would literally not be here if I didn't have this hobby. I would not want to be here. So I'm the one who should say thank you. Please never say thank you for videos. Let's get this done. I kind of worked on a method of kneading the dough that works for me, and that's kind of using this part of my hand. Is that how people do it? I don't know. It seems to be working because nothing is sticking to me. It is so smooth and not sticky. Like I didn't use any flour whatsoever. This is one of the easiest doughs I've ever made. The next part is dividing this into eight equal portions. I don't know about equal, but I can definitely do the eight part. Look at this, it doesn't even stick to the knife. So we got two, let me round it up again. This one into four and this one into four. Seems like a lot of dough for each flatbread, but we'll be fine. Each portion will be roughly this size before we flatten it down. But first, these have to rest and rise for 30 minutes. So I'm gonna give them a good 30 minutes and we will check what they look like in a second. So far, this has been pretty easy, so 30 minutes. We're gonna grab one of the doughs and we're gonna sprinkle some flour because now they will definitely stick. We're just going to flatten it down. I don't wanna use too much flour and then ruin such a silky smooth dough. How big should it be? I have no idea. This dough is pretty remarkable. Look at this. It does not stick. Have you ever seen a dough that just does not stick? This is the easiest dough ever. Why am I getting emotional over dough? So we're gonna flatten down all eight of these. And as you can see, it's really easy, you know? 
This is actually really satisfying work. There's tiny work that I hate doing and some that I love. This one I love. It's like playing with Play-Doh, but then you get to eat it after. When I was a kid, I used to eat it regardless. That explains so much. So many choices have come from that. Why is this dough shaped like a foot? That literally looks like a foot. I was gonna cook you, but now I'm just gonna upload you on Food Finder. As you can see, it's really thin. It's actually a really good consistency for a dough. I don't know if it's gonna puff up. It kind of doesn't look like there's layers and air in it, but maybe. So I'm gonna finish rolling them up and then we're gonna fire up, not the grill, whatever that is, my little cooking device. And hopefully we get that puff up. And no oil, nothing, just straight up two ingredients on there. Let's do it. Is it gonna puff up? Fingers crossed. Oh, something is happening. Oh, it is puffing up in the most satisfying way. So it's been like 40 seconds and we got a little bit of a puff. Maybe not as extreme as in the video, but you can literally see the bubbles. Maybe the temperature should have been a little bit higher. And in the back, two ingredients. And this looks like straight out of like an Indian restaurant. That's the most similar thing I've tried to this kind of flatbread. I'm gonna change lives with this video. 40 seconds each side. Life changing. Let's see if our second one puffs up a little bit more. This one is sizzling more. Oh, this is ready. This looks so good. This looks like it's gonna be in the international section of Walmart. Like, how did I make this? At home. We have no excuse. Okay, I'm gonna put this on the table because I think it's ready. I don't wanna go past the 40 seconds recommended. Oh my God, look at the bubbles. <sighs> This one puffed up the most. Look at this bubble here. I want to pop it so bad. Like, I should have just let it cook. Look at this, two ingredients. Like what, are you for real? This looks straight out of a fancy restaurant. It's still warm, crispy on the outside. It's practically see-through. You can kind of see you guys if you were a microscopic grain of wheat. This is the only cold one. This is the first one that we baked. Look at this. It's like soft in the center. It almost feels like there was butter in it because it feels buttery, but it's only flour and oil. This one has more of the pockets that I think everyone loves. Look at that. It looks like chewy in the center, but like crispy on the edges. Just imagine dipping this into a curry. That is exactly what I would do with this. Are you kidding me? I made this with these hands that have not an ounce of talent. This is very good. I mean, I need a curry with this. I would scoop up three bowls of curry. This is mine. Indian curry, Japanese curry, goat curry. I've never tried it, but it would still go with this. It's the power of this vehicle. This is insane. This is really, really good. It's so crunchy. Listen to this. The rest of it is chewy. This is insane for two ingredients and 30 minutes of dough rest. Try it. We're gonna start with 100 grams of plain flour and we're gonna add this to a bowl. And to this, we're gonna add 250 milliliters of milk, but you wanna add this in stages because trust me, I've made this mistake. I make crepes a lot. If you mix everything, there's gonna be a lot of lumps. So you wanna do a little bit, like it's destroying its own lumps right now. This is really weird, but it works. If we added everything at once, it's just a mess. I make crepes a lot. I feel like I'm a good person to judge this. So we're gonna see. Not me even knowing the techniques to break up the lumps. This technique really works because this is so smooth. It looks like I put in a blender and that is how we make the crepe batter with not a single lump inside. I also think this will only make like four crepes in most. So this is very much an individual portion. So you can just adjust it. Trust me, I will adjust it. I think my technique on spreading crepes might be award winning. I don't know if this is how they do it in France, but this is kind of, for me, the easiest way to do it is you pour the batter and then you use the bottom of it to shape it into a perfect circle. I know it sounds complicated, it's really easy. So I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna do about this much. I think that kind of worked out. It's definitely not your traditional crab batter. This one's a little bit thicker. I would have liked them to be a little bit thinner, but it is cooking. So that's, I guess, all that matters. You know what? This might be a good recipe. Let's judge by the color on the other side. That is a pretty good color. Maybe a little bit extra toasty. This might be giving. I love the sounds, listen to it. 
I know my hair is gonna smell like French person for the next month. I'm gonna do something really silly. We folded this in half. I wish it was a little bit thinner. Let's do one more. I'm gonna try to make this next one even thinner. I'm gonna use the official tool this time around and not my technique. Might be better. Let's go. And now we gotta be quick. Oh, I was too ambitious here, I think. I'm not sure about this. Some of it is gonna be really thin and some of it really thick, so I need to patch up a few spots. This is not my first rodeo, as you can see. This might be better. This is a very ambitious flip. One, two. Oh, we did it. I was really scared, but we did it. Why does it smell like black pepper? So this one is a little bit thinner, but I don't like the shape of it because this side is kind of a triangle. But this one was slightly too thick. I'm gonna let it finish cooking and then we're gonna apply the Nutella like in the video. But the actual recipe is two ingredients. This next part is optional. So this first one is the one I made using the soup ladle. And as you can see, this is a good crepe batter. Like, can you believe it's sturdy? It's a little bit thicker. This one is using the official tool to make French crepes, which is that little wooden spatula thingy. And obviously this is a lot more like a French crepe because it's the more traditional way to do it. I'm gonna go with the thinner one because this is more satisfying with Nutella. We're going to just apply a layer of Nutella. It's interesting because for a long time when I was growing up, my whole personality was Nutella. I love Nutella everything. And then I was gifted Nutella anywhere I went. It became a lot. It became too much. I didn't eat Nutella for like a good six years. And lately, I've been enjoying it again. I like that you can use it for recipes. I personally wouldn't eat just Nutella with a spoon. I think that's too rich for me, but I enjoy how easy it is to use, how it brings people together. Everyone eats it their own way. And I think that's beautiful. Maybe I am growing up, you know? Who'd have thought, not me. Why am I putting so much Nutella in this? It's not gonna be enjoyable. I say this as I keep spreading, like stop. Stop this madness. This is kind of what it looks like. Oh man, I know this is gonna be so good. Can you believe this was two ingredients plus the Nutella? It is thin, but it is sturdy. You don't have to worry, this will work out for you. This is perhaps the most satisfying part, which is folding it. Oh, I love doing this. Especially when it's thin, then we're gonna fold it one more time. This is perfect. In the end, you get this. I would just think this is a traditional French crepe, except it really isn't. There's not a whole lot of stuff in here. There's no vanilla, there's no eggs. Do you know what will make it look really good if you squish the Nutella until it pops out? Watch this. Immediately looks a million times better. Cheers. I would never know. Honestly, there's not much more to say. It just tastes like a regular French crepe, except it's not. I don't know what to tell you. The Nutella does mask everything. So it might be that if you taste this on its own, it's not gonna be as good. I'm not gonna vouch for that. But with Nutella, if you try this, people are going to be speechless that you have French baking skills in you. And in reality, you mix two ingredients. Now, why is it crunchy? <laughs> Some of it was too thin and it became crunchy. I like it. 10 out of 10. Beautiful. So I'm So I'm actually gonna be using this mango and raspberry ice cream. So in reality, we're making mango raspberry mochi. No matter how I say it, people always tell me that I say it wrong. So I'm not gonna, I'm not even gonna try it. So we need 75 grams of this. Why is this not yellow? Why does it look like vanilla? I'm so sad. We need 75 grams of this. And by the look of it, it's gonna take a long time. One spoon at a time. Wait, are you for real? And that is a total of 75 grams. This ice cream is actually quite beautiful because it's got like the raspberry swirls in the middle. But my mochi is not going to be beautiful because it's gonna just end up looking like pink, like raw chicken mochi. We're gonna microwave this. And meanwhile, we get to enjoy a little bit of ice cream. That is so, so delicious. Whenever someone tells me in the comments that I'm cooking things in the oven and you guys know that this is a microwave now, please correct them. I can only fight as many people with my free time. Thank you. For some reason, my ice cream smells like cheese. To this, I'm gonna add this ingredient, which is called glutinous rice flour, which is not the same as regular rice flour. You have to get this from an Asian supermarket, which should be easy to find. And this was really, really cheap. We need 50 grams of this. And also, 
The brand of this is quite an interesting name. Um, the jokes write themselves at this point. We're gonna add our 50 grams of glutinous rice flour, which is not much. We're gonna mix this with the ice cream. Mine would ideally become a little more yellow because it's mango, but because of the raspberry, it's gonna be like a pink. It's a little bit too cake battery for mochi. So this is kind of where we're at in terms of texture. And I'm gonna cover this with a plate and I'm gonna microwave it for two minutes and 30 seconds. And then we're gonna mix it again. Fingers crossed this doesn't burn. Oh, that smells so good. Okay. This is kind of where we're at. It's a little bit on the thicker side. Hopefully this comes together. I don't know, I'm doubting it at this point. I'm gonna use my hands because mine is just not sticky anymore. I think I'm gonna cut this into eight. I think that's what they've done in the video. But I just wish mine was a little bit smoother, but maybe if we work it. I would be lying if I say it doesn't work because that did become pretty smooth. So I believe this is as smooth as it's gonna get. Mine looks like raw meat, like the world's smoothest meatball. An x-ray of my brain. I'm gonna cut this into eight for our miniature mochis. mochis. I almost slipped, I almost got cancelled. Four, and then each of these into two. Why did I do these two colors? Why did I not just do mango? It literally looks like raw chicken before you're about to do a stir fry. So I have a tiny little bit of vegetable oil in my hands, and this is what's gonna make it really shiny on the outside. We're just gonna try and roll this into a shiny, perfect circle, because I want this to look professional, you know? Because it's already the wrong color, it already looks like raw chicken. Can this at least look delicious? Just nice and smooth. I mean, that's not bad. It could be a little bit rounder, but homemade mochi never looks too perfect as well. So this will be fine. You know what? I actually think this looks surprisingly delicious. It smells really good. Problem is they're cooling down, so it's really hard to shape them now. The problem is I tried to make them into a circle and then they just bounce back into a raw chicken. If you could add some sesame seeds on the outside, I feel like that would elevate the look. It's not terrible. Once you see it on a plate, it's like, oh yeah, that kind of looks like mochi. Very homemade, rustic mochi, but mochi nevertheless. You know what always elevates everything? Icing sugar. Immediately this went from really ugly to, wait, I kind of want to eat it. Like it looks rustic in the best way. Into an Asian restaurant and they brought this out as a dessert and you're like, I've never had homemade mochi before. Except it's two ingredients and we made it in the microwave. Go us. I'm gonna grab the prettiest one. I think the texture is going to be perfect. Why do I actually love the look of it? Like that looks really good with the icing sugar. That is perfect. I've never had anything better. The best way to describe this, if mochi was made by a grandma, it's got that rustic texture to it. It's doughy in the best way. And it's got a nice flavor of mango raspberry in there, but it's not too powerful, but it's also not artificial, which is what I hate about a certain mochi that you buy from the supermarket. This recipe is really promising. I want to try this with so many different things. I'm going to do it. Maybe on TikTok. This is so good. No words. I'm gonna start by separating the egg whites from the egg yolks. I gotta do this right because if I get any egg yolk in there, it's over. You don't wanna mess this one up, you know? We only gotta do this four times, no big deal. I love that this is the source of stress that I have in my life. So far, so good. Oh, this is truly two ingredients, by the way. Like this one, even when it comes down, <gasps> Can I save this? Eggs are known for not whipping when there's egg yolk in it. It might not work out. This is gonna be my Roman Empire every time I go to sleep from now on. I really don't wanna waste four eggs. There's a tiny bit of egg yolk left, but you know what, I'm feeling positive. If this whips, it'll be fine. Fingers crossed. If this doesn't whip like this, I don't know what else. It has whipped into soft peaks. 
This is definitely no stiff. I'm not gonna waste another four eggs because I think this is good enough, but it should be a little bit stiffer. But I think this is as stiff as it's gonna get. So for the next part, we're gonna add the egg yolks. We are just combining this with the chocolate, but because the chocolate is one quarter of a cup of chocolate melted, it might cook the eggs. Mine is still warm. I'm gonna do this little by little. Let's add the chocolate. Okay, we really don't wanna scramble these eggs, even though it sounds kind of delicious. Chocolate scrambled eggs. Okay, there's a little bit of chunks. I think in the original video, there was some chunks in the chocolate as well. So I think if you use like sugar-free chocolate, you can make this really healthy. I just want this to taste good, you know, because when people make healthy versions of anything, I'm all for it, but it has to taste good. It has to be an improvement of some kind. Honestly, it's giving brownie. It's a pretty good like, I don't wanna say silky, but shiny, plasticky texture. So far, so good. We did not scramble the eggs, which was my biggest concern. Now we wanna gently fold the egg whites. So we don't wanna ruin the air that we put into them. We're just gonna try our best here. This is like a souffle or something. I need more egg whites, so I'm gonna add a whole chunk. I know we're using four eggs, and I'm about to say the most stupid sentence I've ever said, but this is smelling very eggy. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not sure. So we're gonna just combine this. Kind of looks like marble cake at this stage. You wanna keep combining, but like don't ruin the bubbles. The bubbles is what we want. Otherwise this is gonna be just a single chocolate cookie. So I'm gonna add the remaining of the egg whites and we're gonna do one last fold. It looks like a pretty good brownie batter. I would show you more, but I don't wanna ruin the texture because it's quite fluffy. This whole thing so far took maybe like two, three minutes. So this is promising. So I'm going to add batter. It smells really good. I mean, it smells like chocolate. There are some chunks of chocolate in it. I actually wanted the texture in it. I'm gonna add maybe just a couple more chocolate pieces in it, just for a little bit of something when we cut into it. And this still is two ingredients because this is the same chocolate I used in the center. I mean, that's it. This is ready to go in the oven for 25 minutes. But I think this will work out. Fingers crossed. So I'm going to get these out with three minutes left for 25 minutes because they look ready. Oh, they look so good. This took a total of 23 minutes and it looks pretty perfect. Like it is shiny. It looks like the best brownie ever. The reason why I took it out a little bit early is we're gonna melt some chocolate on top to do like a crunchy layer. So we're just gonna be adding a few chocolate discs. These are thin so they should melt really quickly, but you do whatever you want. I would eat it as it is. Like, can you believe this is two ingredients? This is really hard to believe. Like, I'm known for being dramatic, but I'm not being dramatic this time around. Like, this is crazy. I'm gonna use a spatula and I'm just going to smooth out. Oh, do you see the shine on this chocolate? This looks like I tempered the chocolate or something. That is a beautiful brownie. I don't know what it's gonna taste like because this is mostly eggs. That's not what I think of when I think of the most delicious brownie in the world, but maybe. So this is it. It looks very smooth, shiny, chocolatey. You already know, we gotta wait for this to cool down before we slice into it because we want clean cuts. I think it's gonna give. It's already given. And this is just a spatula. I think our brownie is fully set because I can kind of move it around and show it to you. And I think we got a crunchy topping. Listen to this. I know it would crack if I hit it, but I don't want to ruin it. Let's see if we can get it out. I mean, we can. This recipe is kind of slow. Please don't taste eggy. So here we've got our brownie. It is solid. I mean, I also put it in the fridge. That's why it's extra solid. Hopefully it's not dry in the center, but listen to the crack. There was no crack, <laughs> but it would have been nice. Let's cut it maybe. I'm gonna say eight portions out of this. So here we've got our two ingredient brownies with a little crunchy layer on top. I'm gonna go for this one here. Are you joking? <sighs> that looks like the perfect square of brownie. It looks like bought from the store. Like who made this? Little Debbie? Did a little Debbie come to my house and bake this? It is fudgy. It is precise, chocolatey. And it smells even better. Let's give it a try. Oh my God. Oh, that's the best brownie I've ever made. It's not eggy at all. This tastes like an adult brownie. Wait, not that kind of brownie. That's not what I meant. What I meant was because I use semi-sweet chocolate, the sweetness, it's perfect. You know when you eat a brownie and you're like, ugh, it's too sweet. I can give it two bites maybe. This is insane. How can a brownie be so delicious without being too sweet? 
I don't know. Try it exactly the way I've done it. Semi-sweet chocolate, the crunchy topping, it's texture heaven, chocolate times a million. That is the best brownie recipe. I've tried million, two ingredients. It's literally perfect. So we're gonna start by slicing our potatoes in half and I'm gonna start with this one. I'm like looking for the perfect size to hold it. That makes sense in my head. Okay. This is a potato indeed. Could have been cake. That would be nice. No. And this is a mandoline. Mandoline? Did I just make that up? Is it just me or mandoline would be a beautiful name for a baby boy? This is mandoline. Mandoline Gomez. <laughs> baby name ideas. Thank you. So we're just gonna slice this. That is too thick. Okay, you need to adjust the thickness. I also went flying. <laughs> what was that? I think this is the one that's giving. It's so thin, it's see-through. <laughs> I'm really struggling for this to come out whole, look, because it's so, so thin. Maybe if I press it, let me try pressing it. I'm so scared. My finger's getting caught up in here. What is going on here? <laughs> Why are they all like this? Which is fine. I'm gonna put them on a paper towel to dry. Something tells me this recipe is gonna work out. By the way, one potato makes a whole lot of fries. And these have no oil, so they're really much healthier version than your traditional lays. Because they have to lie in a fully horizontal line. You kinda can't make too many at the same time. I'm just gonna remove the moisture for now and we'll see. How many really could you make? Not enough to fill you up. It's still better to go to the store and buy a bag, but we'll try it. I've also decided to salt mine already, because this is two ingredients and salt is one of them. Because the salt is going to remove some more moisture they might end up being crispier. My grandma used to do this with french fries and they were the best french fries in the world because she salted them before, not after. Life hack for my grandma. Rest in peace, grandma, and thank you for the knowledge. Slayed in life, slayed in heaven. She would find it funny. That's it. It's a potato. <laughs> I'm going to line them all. This is what my fries look like before you put them in the microwave. You gotta make sure they're not overlapping, otherwise this is going to be a disaster. A little extra salt. Two minutes on this side, we're gonna flip them, and two minutes on the other side. Let's see what happens. I don't know what's exactly going on in here, but it seems wet and steamy. Okay. Why do they look practically ready? Are these crunchy already? Oh no, they're not there yet. So I'm gonna flip every single one of them. Okay, I'm gonna do just 30 more seconds on this side because mine are ready in two minutes. <gasps> it's fine. Oh! That was my last potato. What happened here? Why is my microwave so powerful? This is how many potatoes we've made. The good news is they seem crispy. And I honestly would have thought this is a store-bought potato chip because they're so thin. They're like see-through. Do you know that cartoon when Donald Duck is slicing bread? Very much it's giving that. And they do seem crispy, listen to this. That's a crispy potato. Let's listen to the crunch. I mean, that literally tastes exactly like potato chips from the store. You could add seasoning, like maybe popcorn seasoning, and this is a great idea. I know they're oil-free, so they're like supposed to be healthier. You cannot taste that they're oil-free. To me, this is better than potato chips from the store. They taste like from Whole Foods, you know? This is delicious. It took two minutes. If they're so thin like mine, you don't even have to flip them. Look at this texture. It's almost see-through. The only thing is, you have to make a lot. I need an industrial size microwave and then do a full sheet. Do you listen to this? This is insane. This is very, very good. 100% approved. I love these. These are so delicious that if I close my eyes and you tell me they come from Whole Foods, I'm like, yeah. Of course they do. This is so good. Life changing. Can you believe that? Salt and potatoes. That's it. How much did I like these? This much. The f
The first thing you want to do is separate the crunchy part of the Oreo from the cream. I'm not doing a perfect job here by any means. There's some cream left on this part, but I'm just thinking of it as extra flavor. But also I've done two full packs of Oreos, which is how much you need for this recipe. And that's a lot. So at some point you stop caring. It's like a lot of things in life. I could swear when I was little, I used to do this to Oreos and they used to come off perfectly. I also used to use my teeth for this, which would not be hygienic just the crunchy part of the Oreos and just the cream part of the Oreos. So I've got my food processor and this is like one of those fake food processors. They're not very good, but they do the job. So if this works, anything will work. So we're gonna put a whole lot of Oreos in here. Look at this. Because there's only two ingredients. You can add butter, you can add extra sugar. Like this is the whole thing, you know? There's a full Oreo here. Oh well, so this is it. It is a whole lot of Oreos. We're putting the lid on it. And my neighbors are about to come knock on the door because it's 3 a.m. Wait, it doesn't work. Oh, that scared the out of me. Subscribers love him, neighbors hate him. The content is good. At what cost? This will be the bottom of our ice cream and also the crunch in it. So I'm gonna get all this out. Some better blended than others for sure. Is it perfect? No, but it's good enough. So this is 300 milliliters of whipping cream specifically. And we're just gonna add this to a food processor, which is an interesting thing, but I love because I don't wanna use dishes and utensils unless it's needed. So we're gonna whip this first. I wouldn't call this whipped, but there is air into it. To this, we're gonna add, oh, that looks so wrong. Just the Oreo filling. And that is essentially it. The next step is to assemble this and then we wait for this to solidify. Oh, this is so satisfying. They should sell this as a spread. I feel like it's a missed opportunity. So we're gonna mix this in. Am I crazy or has this gone blue? I am colorblind, but like, what made this blue? I am so confused. The sweetness is perfect. This is essentially a two ingredient Oreo McFlurry. I'm not even joking. So this is kind of the texture you're looking for. You also don't want grains and chunks, which I do got some here. To this, we're gonna add some Oreos. It's gonna be our crunch. You don't wanna add too much, just kind of like that. That seems like the perfect amount. What you're gonna get is essentially an Oreo McFlurry. Like, I'm not joking. That is the consistency you get from this, which I think will be perfect also. Yes, just part of the job. We're gonna grab the Oreos and we're going to make a crust. Now, the interesting thing is there's nothing to make this into a crust. So you are literally just laying Oreos on here and hoping for the best. I think that's a good layer. The cream is actually not too sweet because there's no sugar in it. So I think altogether this is gonna be balanced. Oh, my neighbor's knocking on the door. I'm scared. And there goes our Oreo McFlurry mixture. Oh, that looks so good. This is also the perfect container for this because it will be thick. It's truly two ingredients, you know? Ooh, and a little bit for me. I love a leftover. So let's do the top now. I need to be careful because I don't want this to sink in. This looks pretty damn incredible. And you would not believe if I told you this is two ingredients. You just think at least six ingredients. It's giving six, you know, but it's not. So we're lying, you're so welcome. This video keeps on giving. I can't believe this. So I'm gonna put the lid on here. Oh my God, this is so full. Oh, it will not fit. Never mind. I will not put the lid. I'm just gonna leave it like that. I don't like the compressed look. You know, I want this to look more rustic. I'm gonna put this in the freezer for an hour to two hours because I really wanna cut into this. And if it's still soft, I'm okay with it. I kinda want it like a McFlurry consistency, not fully solid. So let's see what happens. So it's been maybe like two hours of this being in the freezer and I think it's actually becoming too solid. So I'm like, I need to cut into it now because I want this to be soft. It holds pretty well, even though there's no butter on the top. Do you see how nothing slides? One single grain of Oreo. I know this is what you're waiting for. Oh, it is actually really soft. Oh, it was only solid on the sides. It's kind of like an Oreo trifle, actually. Like an Oreo mousse kind of situation. Oh no, it is solid in the sides. This is what was throwing me off. So the sides are like ice cream, but the center is like soft. So you get a little bit of everything. It doesn't look too bad when you cut into it. However, my plate is giving graveyard graveyard shift. I'm gonna say something so embarrassing that I'm gonna be embarrassed. This is gonna be on YouTube for the rest of my life. English is not my first language. I actually grew up speaking Portuguese and then I learned English later on. Whenever I heard people talking about the graveyard shift, I thought that's just so many people in America work at graveyards. <laughs> 
I thought all these people had jobs at the cemetery. Anyways, on that note, let's give this a try. I want the soft bits. I want the part where it's like almost like whipped cream. It's still solid, you see, but it's very soft. Oh my God. This is better than McFlurry. It's like a McFlurry, but only the softest, creamiest part of a McFlurry. Sweetness, 10 out of 10. Textures, 10 out of 10. The balance, 10 out of 10. The Oreo flavor, 11 out of 10. This is really good. No one will ever be able to clock you out on the two ingredient situation. Make this impress people and literally buy cream and two packets of Oreos. You're welcome, I just changed your life. This is also changing my life, cheers. This is 500 kilograms of chocolate. Wait, no, that's not right. 500 grams, which is half a kilogram. It's a whole lot of chocolate. Like, are they for real? And to that, we're gonna add essentially half a kilogram of Nutella. What is going on? Mickey Mouse when he's shocked. <gasps> not a silly goofy mood at like 5 a.m. So I've got 500 grams of melted chocolate here. So I just put it in the microwave little by little because otherwise it burns. 30 seconds, then 30 seconds, then 30 seconds. The only reason why I'm even entertaining this recipe because this is insane. This is too much chocolate. My sister, for example, loves chocolate and loves Nutella and she would probably eat this up. So there must be more people like that. I feel like my palate has developed as I've become an adult and I'm past this point. This does not look appetizing, not even a little bit. We're still gonna give it a try. I hate that this is not fully smooth. So I need this to become smooth first. So this is pretty smooth now, which is kind of what I was looking for. And to this, we're gonna add 420 grams of Nutella. That's like a whole container, one of the big ones. This is so much Nutella that I'm measuring with the scales, nine cups. 420 grams, let's see what it is. Do I even have 420 grams here? Like, look at this. This is all going in there. This is not even a quarter of it. This either feeds a lot of people, which is maybe a possibility. That was only 100 grams. So we need four times that. We're at 170. I'm not gonna have enough. Maybe just about. This is crazy. 300 grams of Nutella. 350. I'm getting every ounce left. 377? Come on, this cannot be enjoyable. I know we're trying to be creative with the two ingredient recipes because it's not easy, but this is beyond creative. 400 grams of Nutella. I don't even know if it's 420, but I'm doing 400. So I'm just going to fold the chocolate with the Nutella because the chocolate is melted. This should beat up the Nutella a little bit and hopefully the whole thing will be like smooth because right now the Nutella is kind of in the center. I will say the Nutella smells like hazelnut. It kind of went from sickly milk chocolatey to kind of like a hazelnut toastiness chocolate note. Kind of smells like gelato in Italy. Ferrero Rocher maybe. Do you know what? This is actually looking like a really nice consistency. Look at this. I feel like a chocolatier. Chocolatier is also what I'm gonna be crying when I see the calories in each portion. A single chocolatier. <laughs> this is honestly the perfect texture right now. It has blended into this fudgy, silky consistency and two ingredients only. So I'm using some parchment paper. I'm gonna pour this in here and maybe this is too much fudge for this? I don't know. No, that'll be the perfect amount. I don't know if this will slice and solidify, but we sure will find out. This only takes one hour to set, which I think is relatively short for fudge. You'd think it needs to be overnight in the fridge, but no, just one hour. So that is a plus if you wanna make this last minute. I think this could be something fun for like a party or something. For me personally, a deal breaker would be if this doesn't come off the parchment paper, I would be so sad because sometimes things stick to parchment paper, which doesn't make sense, but it happens. I can show you what this looks like because this is so wet and sticky, jump scare. So I'm gonna put it in the fridge for an hour and I'm just gonna show it to you when we slice into it. Will we be able to get this out of here? I don't know. It's only been an hour and this is shockingly solid. You see the shine on this? It actually does look like fudge. I would never guess this was made with two ingredients. I don't know much about fudge though, so that might be the reason. But the only thing is, I rewatched the video and at no point in the video, you see the lady cutting into this. Is it because it's not gonna work out? I'm gonna get this out. 
that is very satisfying to look at. It is also an earthquake of diabetes. Sometimes life is that way. Can we peel this off? Actually, we can. I was not expecting to be able to cut into this so easy. I really scratched my brain in all the right places. The edges don't look really clean, so obviously we're gonna trim the edges to make this really precise. Oh my God, this cuts exactly like store-bought kind of fudge. I have an idea for a business. What about a low effort bakery with only one and two ingredient recipes. Like, look at this. That looks like something from the supermarket or a bakery. And I have a feeling it's not fully, fully set yet. So we would have needed a little bit longer. Definitely could have been a little bit longer in the fridge. One hour is not optimal. Don't think I can cut into the very center yet. This piece here is fully set. Once it's fully set, this is kind of the texture of your fudge, which is surprisingly professional looking. I can't really cut into the center yet. We're gonna try it. Oh my god, that's too sweet. My teeth. My poor teeth. No, absolutely not. Way too much. No, this is horrible. Don't try this. It's too sweet. It's too much sugar. I'm gonna remelt this, put it in the fridge and use it for something else. You can't eat this on its own. I've never had fudge before. If all fudge tastes like this, this sweet and sickly, then I hate fudge and I'm gonna judge every single person who can eat this. This is so terrible that I have no words. It's straight up sugar. I can't think of anything worse than to have another bite of this. If you If you want to make one bagel only, you're supposed to use one quarter of a cup, but I want to make two bagels. So this is half a cup of each. I'm going to start with half a cup of flour. Always start with the dry ingredients because the other ones are sticky and then you have to wash this. When it comes to not doing the dishes, you know I got that big brain energy. So we're going to do half a cup of self-raising flour because we want to keep these at two ingredients. It has to be self-raising. And then half a cup of Greek yogurt. I really want to add salt and seasoning. I feel like that would be really nice here. But I also do want to be loyal to the two ingredients. And I already been thinking of doing maybe some toppings on top. I guess what really matters is that the dough is two ingredients. You can do whatever you want with this. So that is it. That was fairly easy. It's kind of mind-blowing that this can make a bagel because it really is that simple. And the fact that this is going to be cooked in the air fryer makes it even better. I want to do a full video dedicated to two ingredient and one ingredient recipes only using the air fryer. Give the video a like if you want to watch that. I really want to make it but also I'm not sure if people want to watch that. Is air frying content too niche? Maybe. <laughs> How many of us are into it? My dough is fairly sticky, which is not what I was expecting. So I guess we're gonna need some extra flour on the surface, because otherwise this is gonna stick. So this is already becoming a little too complicated. I'm like, I need my dough to not stick. It does smell really nice. It almost smells like a sourdough, because it's like, it's got that sourness to it, that tanginess, which is really interesting, because it's just two ingredients. I keep saying two ingredients. Take a shot every time I say two ingredients in this video. Oh, that actually is quite a light dough. And it's gonna need so much flour to come together. I'm not a big fan of this recipe. This is not right. It needs more flour. They didn't think about this. I think sometimes it sounds appealing to just do half of each ingredient, but this is not right. Maybe with a different yogurt, not with the cheap one that I bought. <laughs> Let's split this into half. Look how much flour I've added to this. Almost a quarter cup more. Now it is coming together a little bit better after I added a whole lot. So we're supposed to kind of shape it into a long kind of log. Oh, this is sticking everywhere. If it's a moist bagel, I mean, kind of worked as a bagel. Now I just need to move this to the air fryer. How am I going to do that? Usually I just do and then think about it later. Okay, so this looks like a bagel. I'm going to try, I have to remove this because everything's so sticky. I don't like this recipe. I already can tell you this is not fun. I don't think anyone wants to do this in their kitchen. If you're looking for a two ingredient recipe, you're not looking 
to make this kind of mess. Otherwise you just want to go buy a bagel or make a real bagel. If I ever do a cookbook with a perfected version of these recipes, this one needs a lot of work. I need to try this a couple of times and just think about it. So I've got a piece of parchment paper because I'm going to put this in the air fryer and I'm going to try to move the bagel. This is going to be so hard. This is so we did one. I will be surprised if this works. That is kind of what our bagel looks like. It does look the best. It's very flat and heavy. So this is gonna go on the air fryer for, I believe it's 15, 10 minutes. I don't know, I'm gonna check. This is also my first time using an air fryer. Should have made something better. Oh my God, this is terrible. So we're gonna fry the bagels for 10 minutes at 350 Fahrenheit. Jump scare music because the bagels didn't turn out exactly how I wanted. However, they look like beautiful buns. I'm really intrigued by this texture. They feel light and amazing. I think I made the mistake of making the holes too tight. I made the holes too tight and then there was no definition in the hole. Nice. Let's cut into it because I am intrigued. They feel light and actually feel really nice. And I looked at them and I was like, immediately no. And then I touched them and I was like, wait a second. If it is fully cooked in 10 minutes, pretty impressive. Let's see the center. Oh my God. It's almost like a hybrid between a bagel and a muffin, you know, like an English Oh my God, this is so good. They don't look good, but it tastes incredible. So I'm gonna add some butter to them. I think the ratio maybe of my flour or my yogurt, something was off, you know, even though I followed the recipe to the tea, I really did. I was trying to do well, something didn't work out. When you add butter to anything, it just something magical happens. The butter slides off. Let's give it a try. Oh my God, that is so chewy. Soft in the center. That is an amazing breakfast. I know they look so ugly. Please do better than what I did. But these are so delicious. They need a little bit of salt and some seasoning on top. But this is a great two ingredient base. It's annoying to make. I hated the process. But I would have to lie to you if I didn't say that I think these are worth the effort. Because I would make these again. And that's how I know. Because I hate making anything. Even though that is my whole legacy. Making things. Funny how that works. I bet when I said two ingredient recipes, you didn't think it was gonna be milk and vinegar, yet here we are. So this is one liter of milk. I just splashed milk all over my face. I'm using half of the recipe in the video. That just looked like too much cheese. I'm like, if I keep eating like this, I'm going to be lactose intolerant. It's a matter of months, weeks, days. So this is one liter of milk. Why did I scare myself pouring milk? So I'm gonna heat this up to 46 degrees Celsius exactly. I love having a photographic memory. And I know it really has to be 46 because otherwise this doesn't work. And then we're gonna pour the vinegar into it. I'm gonna heat this up and hopefully it comes up to a boil quickly. Let's see. You guys always stress out how important it is to let things come to the right temperature. Right now we're at 25 degrees. So halfway there already. This is gonna be really quick. It's kind of satisfying to look at the temperature of things. Wait, this is getting there really, really quickly. We're at 35 degrees. We're 10 degrees away, practically. I need to start slowing things down because this is going really quick. 44, okay, that's it. We're at 46 degrees. So I'm gonna let it stabilize a little bit. 46.4 degrees. So I'm gonna add my vinegar. And that is it. That is the two ingredient recipe. I can't remember if we mix or we leave it. I don't think it matters. I am going to cover this and let it sit for 10 minutes exactly. So 10 minutes have gone by and I am ready to check on my cheese curds. I feel very medieval, you know, like. Medieval jump scare. I don't think that worked. It smells like cheese. This made me realize that every time you open a fresh bag of mozzarella, it smells like vinegar. Cause this smells like cheese, but it's vinegar. This is the test. Is it giving cheese curds? Oh, I got micro cheese curds. But cheese curds nevertheless, this is not gonna make a whole lot. Look at that. 
Let me make sure we get all the water out. Oh yeah, this is gonna be a micro cheese curd. Maybe using a strainer, because mine is so fine. I think this will be better. It's always a bad idea when I invent my own rules. But I do think this will work out. Look at that. That is superior, because I can get all the water out. Well, not me hacking the hack. So I'm going to try to get all my cheese out. Best case scenario, I got mozzarella. Worst case scenario, I got cream cheese. Mid case scenario, I got burrata. It can only be good in this video. This is what it's supposed to look like. It's very like cream cheese burrata. I'll take it. But I'm not sure about this. How is this going to become solid? That is my question. <laughs> this is never going to become mozzarella. I don't know what the mistake was. I followed everything to the correct degree. So I put the mozzarella in the fridge for a little bit just to see if maybe it's going to thicken up because I've run this as much as I could on the sift. It kept losing water and volume. So I'm like, I can't lose any more volume. So in the end, it looks like cream cheese. It's actually more liquid than cream cheese. What did I make? Does it taste like cream cheese? Maybe it might taste like cream cheese, you know? So I'm gonna use one of the flatbreads that we made. I'm just gonna use a little bit because I don't want to ruin it. I wouldn't even call this the consistency of cream cheese. Would you? Maybe? It does stay. It's not too liquidy. It smells nice. I made sour cream. Oh, it is really sour. But is this supposed to... I might die. This is vinegar sour cream. Can't say that I'm crazy about this. I'm gonna keep it super real. However, I do think this might work. I don't wanna say that this person is lying because I don't know. I don't like this. I'm sorry. Trash. So I'm gonna start with five ounces of Greek yogurt. I never know if Greek yogurt is the same as Greek style yogurt. And at this point, I'm too afraid to ask because I've been buying both. Can't wait to read your comments. A lot of these two ingredient recipes are either Nutella, double, triple chocolate, everything, or very healthy. So I wanted to include this one because it's kind of like a healthier, low carb kind of recipe, which I think sometimes people are looking for as well. So hopefully this will taste good. Half a cup of protein powder is an insane amount of protein powder. Like what? This is crazy. How much protein is death by protein? Yeah, three bites and you're the hog. Yeah, that seems like a lot of protein, you know? I decided to go for a white chocolate and hazelnut flavor because I couldn't find cookie dough flavor, but this to me is very cookie dough, is caramelly, like cozy flavors. We're supposed to mix this until this becomes kind of like breadcrumbs. It's really weird, but I'm gonna show you. I love the smell of this protein. The thing with protein is I always love the artificial smell of it. Then you taste it and it's got that proteiny aftertaste that it feels like I just took a bite of a cow or something. Why does it make me feel like that? Mine is not going as chunky, so mine actually looks like cookie dough already. Let's mix this a little bit more. I don't think I'm gonna need any extra water. Maybe just because my Greek yogurt was quite watery. But this is not giving cookie dough. Is it? I don't need the water. If you want to make these two ingredients, you basically eat the cookie dough as it is. I feel silly calling this cookie dough because it's just yogurt and protein. This protein yogurt. I kind of want to make this look like chocolate chip cookie dough. So I'm going to do something crazy. I'm going to add the third ingredient, but this is optional. You know I've got good hopes for this when I go and get the fancy European chocolate. I don't want to add too much, but this chocolate is actually like a 70%, so it is healthier. I just want enough that this looks like chocolate chip cookie dough looks good to me. It's almost giving cookie dough too much that it makes me want to make some chocolate chip pancakes. It's giving pancake batter really. So mine is a little more liquidy than in the video, but if it tastes good, I'm willing to forgive. Now why is this healthy and delicious? I'm gonna say something so crazy that I've never said before. I could deal with other chocolate. This is Creamy and delicious. This is kind of the best way of eating protein powder. This is very, very good. Wait, is this healthy? It doesn't taste healthy. How do I know? There's a lot of words in the back. Never mind. I don't want to know. This is really, really delicious. Oh man, who am I? At 5 a.m. licking a spatula of protein powder and Greek yogurt. <laughs> I thought it'd be in a lot of places at this point in my life, and none of them were this. 
delicious. Try this. Honestly, I came full of judgment. This lady ate up this idea. This is so good. I never thought of doing this and I will do this going forward. This is so, so delicious. I love this consistency. So and that is it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. This was a long video. This was a video with a few ingredients, but somehow chaotic. I don't know. I thought this was going to be so easy. I mean, how difficult can it be? Two ingredients, but it ended up being very chaotic. But I also feel like we made huge discoveries. There are so many things in this video that honestly I'm going to take with me for the rest of my life. Incredible knowledge. So I really hope you guys enjoy this. I have an idea, but it's so silly that I don't want to say it. I'm going to say it. I want to do the next episode. Three ingredient recipes, four ingredient recipes, five ingredient recipes, until we're just making things. Until we're just making recipes. Or maybe we can take it all the way to like a hundred ingredients. I don't know. Is this stupid? Give the video a like if that sounds like something that you want to watch. If it doesn't, honestly, I get it. <laughs> I really get it. Don't forget to subscribe, switch my notifications on before you go. A huge, huge thank you to those of you who have my notifications on. You make these videos possible. It's hard to make long content because you need to buy so many ingredients and so many things have to go right. It is also the most rewarding content that I make and I know it wouldn't be possible without those of you who are subscribed. So a huge thank you. I love you. I really do. And I will see you guys on my next video. Bye-bye.